ان الحمد لله نحمد تعالى ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكلوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فان الاسك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله واهلها في النار اما بعد continuing on in our series our dars about the nawaqid al islam or the nullifiers of islam a concise explanation of the nullifiers of islam Uh, which is a comprehensive study of the treaties by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullahu ta'ala and we were st- in our last dars we were still in the introduction we we're talking about we left off in something talking about a very important issue which is the issue of takfir which is a seri- very si- serious issue and to briefly recap we said that this is a judgment reserved to the scholars in Islam and more importantly especially in muslim lands you'll find that this ruling is reserved to the islamic judges so someone will actually go to court to determine if they have apostated from the religion or not this is a judge because there's a sharia ruling which is um tied to this so these are very serious rulings as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh said in an authentic hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned against pronouncing takfir upon specific individuals and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said any person who says to his brother o kafir meaning o disbeliever then it returns to one of them either it is as he pronounced or it returns back upon him and this was uh this is in bukhari and so we learn the seriousness of making takfir and that takfir just very briefly we want to mention a couple of things about takfir takfir as we mentioned before takfir is divided into two categories tak- takfir mutlaq wa takfir muayyan and takfir mutlaq is the general takfir and takfir muayyan is a specific takfir meaning that you are applying it to a particular individual takfir al muayyan means you are applying takfir you are pronouncing a specific individual by name or or something as a disbeliever and general takfir refers to the general ruling that whoever does a specific sin or utters a saying or holds a particular belief that is considered disbelief according to the Quran and the Sunnah or the consensus of the scholars then this person or group or sect has fallen into disbelief that is the general takfir meaning that anyone who does such and such is uh no longer a muslim or is classified as a disbeliever either in accordance with the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has said this in the Quran and the Quran is the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said it in an authentic hadith or that the consensus of the the scholars in Islam uh in a particular time have uh are agreed upon that whoever does such and such or ever says such and such or believes such and such is a disbeliever because they have gone against the Quran and the Sunnah uh the specific takfir involves applying that ruling of disbelief upon a particular individual or group for example Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran and we mentioned this before in surah al-bayna uh in the ladina kafaru min ahli kitabi wal mushrikeen fi nari jahannam so verily those who disbelieve from amongst the people of the scripture and the pagans will abide in the fire forever so here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of the polytheist and this is a general takfir and the people of the scripture who did not believe in the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam this is the general characteristic of disbelief so whoever fits into that would be considered a disbeliever so there we get an understanding of the issue of takfir in general that uh it's a particular category or a particular characteristic of uh disbelief and whoever falls into that is a disbeliever but 
before we declare disbelief on that on a particular individual who fell into that sin, who fell into that uh, that description of being a disbeliever, then that's where it requires going through the conditions for making tekfir or the ruling of tekfir upon a particular individual. So the specific tekfir entails declaring a specific individual to be an apostate for committing major disbelief. For example, Abu Lahab is mentioned in the Quran as being a disbeliever. However, before making a specific tekfir, as we just mentioned, unlike the aforementioned example, uh, there are certain conditions that must be looked at by a scholar or judge qualified to do so to make that pronouncement. So it's incredibly important. So, for example, Abu Lahab is mentioned specifically in the Quran. And if an individual is mentioned specifically in the text of the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, then they're a disbeliever. There's, uh, then we can say, yes, so-and-so is in the hellfire. It is clear from the Quran and the Sunnah because we believe in the Quran, which is the speech of Allah, and we believe in the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, which is wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as well. Al-Utaybi says there are four conditions for takfir. Firstly, affirmation that the particular statement or action or leaving something from the religion is disbelief according to the evidence of the Quran and the Sunnah. So first we need evidence that the particular sin uh, or particular statement or what have you is uh, disbelief. And we need that evidence from what? From the Quran and or the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, or as we mentioned, ijma of the ulama, you know, ijma uh, the the consensus of the scholars. Secondly, so the second condition. So this is Al Utaybi mentioned four con- categories or four conditions or shuru to takfir. Some scholars say three, but they're all included inside of one another. Okay, and some may even mention just two, but we'll break it down here according to al uh classification here. And this is uh, in accordance with the classifications that are mentioned by the ulama. So he mentioned, secondly, there should be affirmation that the individual is responsible and sane. So first, so the second condition is that a person must be a person who is uh, responsible or mature and sane. So if someone who is out of their mind, they're crazy, or they are, uh, you know, what what have you, and they mention a statement of disbelief, or they do something of disbelief, they throw the Quran on the ground, or they step on it, or whatever, but they're not in their right mind, they are actually mentally uh, incapable of distinguishing between truth and and falsehood, then they're not held accountable for this. Then you cannot make, that's a prohibitor to making takfir. You can't make takfir on that individual. Or uh, they're experiencing temporary insanity. Or the person who is not mature, so the children, you don't make takfir on the children. Even if they hold a, a, a belief, they ask you a question or they, they have disbelief in their belief. Of course, they're not responsible for what they are uh, uttering until they reach the age of maturity and they have uh, you know have knowledge about that situation about that issue of creed or what have you thirdly so the third condition of shurut uh, takfir shart min shurut takfir you know one of the conditions the third condition before you can make takfir is thirdly that the individual you must present the evidence to the individual that he or she has fallen into disbelief meaning that aqama alayhi al-hajj that you have to establish the evidences from the Quran and the sunnah to make them known uh make it known to them because maybe they are ignorant maybe they have other bijah they're they're excused by ignorance that the particular uh aspect of disbelief that they have fallen into uh, is disbelief. Maybe they're unaware that it's disbelief. So in this situation, so you must present the evidence to the individual before making take fear of them. Ibn, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah said, it is not for anyone to declare disbelief upon another Muslim, even if he makes an error or mistake until the evidence has been presented to him and clarified for him. So therefore, whoever has his Islam affirmed without any doubt to whether he is a Muslim or not, then that is not removed from him by speculation. And we mentioned this before. Rather, it cannot be removed except after providing the evidence and removing doubtful impediments. 
to make in takfir, meaning uh, in in Arabic they say the uh, the the impediments to takfir is referred to as uh, meaning those things which prevent you from making takfir on a particular indiv- individual, and they're called the uh, mu'ane, the mu'ane to takfir. So these are the things that prohibit from making a takfir, making takfir, or the pronouncement of takfir on a particular individual, is that their their doubts must be removed. Uh, they must be aware that what they're doing is disbelief. Or and they also, uh, you know, must be sane and and so forth, as we mentioned. And it must be something that the ulama, the scholars, are in agreement that it is disbelief. So if there's ikhtilaf on something, whether it takes you out of the fold of Islam or not, meaning the fuqaha have have differed. Imam Malik said this. Imam Shafi said this. Abu Hanifa said this. Imam Abu Hanifa said this. Uh, Imam Ahmed said this. If it was uh, it was a situation where there is disagreement, or the Sahaba disagreed whether that takes you out of the fold of Islam or not, then this issue, then this is an issue. Then it is not uh, permissible for you to make takfir of an individual for that, but rather, uh, you know, this of course should be referred to a judge, and. And it is not uh, something that you should make tech fear of someone for because the scholars disagreed whether it is disbelief or not, whether it takes you out of the fold of Islam or not. So that can be an impediment to making tech fear. But if it is something from the Quran or the Sunnah and that is clear from the evidences and the consensus of the ulama, then of course uh, this will take someone out of the fold of Islam if they fall into this and the conditions for tech fear are in place. Fourthly, uh, Utaibi mentioned that the factors that prevent making takfir, as we just mentioned, uh, al muana to takfir, those things which prohibit a person from making takfir, if those factors from preventing making takfir of the individual are removed, uh, meaning that uh, there, those prohibitors to making takfir must be, the impediments to making takfir must be out of the way. For example, if you have an individual you see that they have uh, they uttered a statement of disbelief or or something and but however one of the impediments to tech making tech fear is in place for example they have the excuse of ignorance one of the excuses one of the impediments to making tech fear is called other bijahil is that a person is excused by being ignorant me maybe they're new to Islam and they don't know the ruling they don't know for example if you ask a new Muslim for example, is the Quran created? Well, the ulama they have ittifaq, you know, the jah- they make takfir of the Jahmi and, and those other groups that say the Quran is created. Because we say no, the Quran is a sifa min sifatillah. It is the kalam of Allah. It's the speech of Allah. It is the divine, perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and it is not created. It's not something Allah subhanahu wa taala created, but rather it is the uh, a characteristic. Uh, a divine characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the kalam of Allah. It is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a new Muslim is not going to know the intri- intricacy of an argument like that. That sounds, you know, this is some, you know, it takes learning about these arguments. Maybe studying the treatise, treatises of the, the scholars that dealt with that fitna, like Imam Ahmed and Asul al-Sunnah and those kind of books, uh, book, books of the Salaf, to understand how they did with this. A new Muslim is not going to have any idea about this argument. They just say, hey, I believe that there's one God worthy of worship, and that Muhammad is his last prophet and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam they don't understand and know these uh, intricate aspects of creed so therefore you, it wouldn't be permissible to make takfir on a person like that if you if they were asked and they said no I don't believe the Quran is I believe the Quran is created by Allah or they they make that a statement like this they don't know so they have the excuse of being ignorant until the proof is established before them and you teach them and they then they learn and then if they still believe that statement then this is something else but however the impediment of takfir was in place which prevents a person from making a judgment of takfir on them this is incredibly important and this is where you find the groups like the Khawarij, the first sect in Islam and the later neo-Tikfiri groups for example we have what they call Al-Qaeda today we have many groups that spin off from them Bin Laden was one of them was a Tikfiri and there's so many there's so many uh, in the Arab world you have Abu Muhammad Maqdisi you have uh, you have uh, Abu Qatada Filistini and then uh, 
uh, you had uh, Sheikh Omar Abdurrahman. You have many people who made takfir without looking at those principles of takfir, that they were very, very um, wide and made takfir easily without looking at the conditions for takfir or violating some of the conditions for takfir. And that's what made them takfiri, meaning that they violated. Maybe they had other aspects in their creed which were in agreement with Ahl Sunnah. But in those issues of takfir is where they strayed from Ahl Sunnah and therefore they left the fold of Ahl Sunnah be considered from Ahl Sunnah to Wal Jama'ah, but rather being uh, adhering to the Khawarij belief and be considered takfiris or be considered Khawarij. So this is incredibly important and there's many evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah to illustrate that this is a, uh, an excuse, the excuse of ignorance like the hadith of Abi Waqit al-Laythi where they said, خَرَجْنَا مَا نَبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ إِلَى هُنَيْنُ وَنَحْنُ هُدَثَا أَهْلِ بِقُفْرَ That the Sahabi رضي الله تعالى عنه, he mentioned that we were uh, Going, they were going to the Battle of Hunain, and they were new to Islam. They had just left disbelief. Uh, then they passed a group of Siddur trees or Lot trees, and they wanted to hang their weapons upon them to seek blessings from those trees. Similar to the way that the Mushrikun of Quraysh, they used to seek blessings, they used to seek barakah uh, from trees. They used to hang their armor and their weapons before they went to battle uh, in order to receive blessings in their uh, battle. So they asked, Can we, uh, Ya Rasulullah, aj'alnana that alan wat, kamalluhum that alan wat? So the companions, these new companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they asked the Prophet sallallahu they said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make for us a tree where we can hang our weapon, weapons on, similar to the way that they have a tree to hang their weapons on, you know, so that they will get blessings in their battle. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very uh, surprised at this and became uh, agitated and angry about this. He said, Subhanallah. Uh, Subhanallah, uh, kama or that he said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, made a statement. You know, said uh, Subhanallah. You verily, you have made a statement like the statement that the people of Musa had said to Musa about making a calf to worship. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Let tabi'una sunan man kana qablakum. That you will follow the way of those people who came before you. Meaning that you would, the nation of Muhammad ﷺ, the Muslims, would fall into shirk. That groups from amongst us would fall into shirk, would go back to shirk and go back to the ways of jahili and paganism. Wa'iyadu billah min dalika. And this is the reason, one of the most important reasons for studying a book like this about those things which take you out of the fold of Islam. So that way, first and foremost, you know tawheed, but you know the opposite of tawheed. You know those things which violate tawheed. And so, this is bi'idnillah sufficient for an introduction and there's many statements of the scholars. I wanted to read some of the statements of the Salaf, but maybe for another time because this dars is not about takfir, but rather it is about uh, those things, some of the things which nullify our creed and then so we'll stick more closely with the text instead of going into some of the other side issues. But I wanted to give us just a basic foundation or a basic background about the issue of takfir because many people go astray in this uh, issue. Sheikh Salim al-Fawzan, Hafid Allah Ta'ala said, a person is not judged uh, with disbelief unless Allah and His Messenger have declared him a disbeliever for committing a sin from the things which nullify one's Islam. Uh, Shaykh Abdulaziz al-Raji, he said, so takfir or declaring someone an innovator or sinner are Islamic judgments. Therefore, its rulings are taken from Islamic law and it is not for anyone to declare someone to be an apostate or sinner or innovator or to be misguided except with evidence. So that was a beautiful statement of Sheikh Abdulaziz al-Rajihi, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, one of our scholars in Riyadh. Again, I'm going to repeat this statement because it's so important for us. So he said, so takfir, or declaring someone an innovator or sinner, 
uh, are Islamic judgments. Remember, these are hukum shara. These are Islamic judgments. When you make, when you, even when you declare, declare someone a mubtadi, if you said so and so is a bit uh, from ahl bid'ah now, maybe someone is from ahl sunnah or they were from ahl sunnah, and now you're making a decree, de- decree upon them that they're from ahl bid'ah. Remember, this is a Sharia ruling. So this is not something light. This is not for just all of us to engage in this. The awam in general. And maybe if we get time, we'll speak about that. I have some speech I've translated from Sheikh Salman Fuzan and from Sheikh and Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili Hafatullah Taala about this issue and Sheikh Abdul Masan Al Abad and many of the ulama which show us and Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah before all of them which show us that these issues are not for the general Muslims to engage in meaning you and I and especially beginning students of knowledge and those people who are from the general Muslims should not be busying themselves with saying so-and-so is uh, an innovator, so-and-so is uh, a kafir, so-and-so is this or that, because these are Sharia rulings and they require knowledge. And they are, as uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz Raji, so takfir, declaring someone an innovator or sinner are Islamic judgments. Therefore, its rulings are to be taken from Islamic law and it is not for anyone to declare someone to be an apostate or sinner or innovator, meaning or mubtadeh, or to be misguided except with evidence. So again, we can't sit around and declare our brothers and sisters in Islam to be misguided or to be innovators except with evidence and except being someone ahlan to do so, someone who has the ability to do so, who has some, uh, some knowledge and, and, or at least can refer that back to the scholars. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was correct was from myself and the shaitan.